Welcome to episode 5. So in this episode we're going to be trying out the IR deco sensor and decoder module which is hooked up to the this port over here. We have a potentiometer connected to this port over here. And this thing actually Seed Studio tries to fool you because they say that this is a um, rotary angle sensor but no it is a dead ordinary potentiometer which you can do an analog read on so that is connected to a0 this is a esp c3 module again this here is <coughs> connected to the um our uh, point six uh, pin six and pin seven i think and this here is connected to that um, NeoPixel LED strip over here. And of course, we are going to be using this remote IR remote with it to uh, we're going to program it to select different colors and what have you. Now, each one of those little NeoPixels is actually addressable. So there is 30 of them here, so um, we will see that in the code. So if I turn it on, and I increase the, there we are. So this potentiometer over here controls the uh, brightness. This is uh, maximum brightness, and you can turn it down, of course, and go until it actually, it actually turns off altogether. Now they're barely, go barely going. Okay, and then with the remote control, I can select different colors. This is blue. I've got it programmed on the number buttons here. One is blue, two is green, and so on. Three, looks like it's cyan. Four, red. Five, magenta. Six, Yellow, seven should be white. Or if I press zero, it'll take random colors for each one. Okay, so now obviously these NeoPixels, they can be addressed. Uh, I'm addressing them in a very simple way, whether either they red, green, and blue is on or off. That's why we're getting the 16 primary colors, if you would like to call them. But of course, you can adjust them in such a way that you can get uh, subtle differences in color by choosing different values, 0 to 255, I think, for each color. So you can get a lot more use out of it than what we are seeing over here. But this is just a test. You'll get the idea. So let's have a look at the code. All right, so for this to make this work, we have included two libraries, the Z3T0 IR remote library and the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Now, these libraries are available also if you want to use the same code in the Arduino IDE. You can just copy and paste it from the um, uh, GitHub repository where I'll be putting this code and you could just cut and paste it here copy and paste it rather and as you can see the same libraries are available here here's the IR remote one and if you put in NeoPixel there's the Adafruit various Adafruit NeoPixel libraries and I think this is the one we're using here Adafruit NeoPixel so that is just 
you would just install them. Um, you can copy and paste the code from the GitHub repository. The links, of course, are in the description, and you can use the Arduino IDE if you are more comfortable with that. But for demonstration purposes, it uh, suits me to use the platform IO. So um, we are still using the C3 module. And if we're going to over here, um, <coughs> we will see how we are including the IR remote, Adafruit NeoPixel. And we actually, this is set up for the C3 module. Uh, remember, if you're using um, the SAMD module or some of the other modules, these pin numbers may well change because they do not, not all of them define them as D5 or D0. They might just be 5 and 0 in, just in numerically. And also this ADC value is related to the um, analog to digital converter that's available on the actual microcontroller that you're using. Um, I think from memory that some of the Arduino modules, they only go up to 1023. So, but the actual ESP32 um, go up to 4095. They have um, more resolution. And of course, ESP32s run at 3.3 .3 volts and so on. And the actual NeoPixel uh, strip that we're using has 30 LED lights on it. Now, the remote control that we're using, uh, I actually did this by um, writing a little bit of code for it. This information didn't come with the kit, but the, each button on the uh, remote uh, has a code that it comes back with. There is a power button, power on off, there is a mode button, mute button, and um, we have a, a, a play pause, previous chapter, next chapter, um, and then we have uh, a button that is actually marked EQ. Then there's a minus and a plus button. But we are, made, we are using these buttons over here. Zero comes back with code 22. And uh, one comes back with 12. Two comes back with 24. Three with 94. Six with 90. Five with 28. Four with 8. Seven with 66. And eight with 82. And nine would be 74. But we're not using the nine button. Okay, so when you see those numbers, that is where they come from, the remote control. And the pin that we are going to be using for the IR receiver is D7. And we are going to define the NeoPixel LED strip. And we tell it how many pixels it has and the pin, you know, they were defined um, over here. Um, and then there is some other properties here, um, a green, red, blue, and I don't even know what Neo KZ, oh, 800, less than 800 kilohertz data transmission. And <clears throat> internally in my code, um, I'm only using a byte because as I, as I said when I was demoing this, I'm only using just the red, green, and blue, the reader on or off. So that's why we're getting you know, it's, it's uh, 16 different colors. And um, I bit number four in a byte, I'm saying if it's on, that will be red. Bit number two will be green. Bit number one is going to be blue. And I'm assigning a byte over here to select the color. Um, so this is just something for testing, okay? So if you wanted to use, the colors can actually be 32-bit values. So, as I said, you can get a lot more different colors out of these NeoPixels than what I'm using here. Just, I'm just using 16 for uh, testing. And case mode is true. Um, I am uh, setting it up like uh, I turn each NeoPixel on in turn for from you know, uh, 0 to 29 or 1 to 30, where however they are, I can't remember how they are exactly. Uh, numbered, but in any case, and I'm calling that chase mode, and 
I then turn them all off again so that's uh, creating a little boolean that says on equals true and set up um, stuff here the pin mode for the uh, potentiometer is going to be input and the LED strip begin IRC, IR receiver begin and this is uh, some uh, just some setup stuff and I've got a, a variable here to store the IR commands that we're going to be receiving from the remote control through the L, uh, IR sensor and decoder so this I call, call chase where it's just turning each individual little uh, neopixel on one one after the other so if they're in on mode then it just it de determines the color from whether the bits are on or not so it's either zero or level level comes of course a value that you'll see coming from the in the loop comes from the potentiometer read and in any case turns on the red green and blue pixels and but if it is not on then it just turns them off and then it shows them and if the IR receiver is available with other words a button is down and it's in the middle of trying to um, display these neopixels we don't want to delay we really want to get out of here and let it change the color or mode so that's what why this is over here and if it happens to be on we do a delay so that we can see the it being on for a certain amount of time if they're not on then it doesn't matter they're just they're off and we want to turn them back on again here is a different mode that's not the ch chase mode this is the randomized mode um, it will it actually select a color for each neopixel randomly um, and display them other than that it's uh, similar to that one here set color uh, is called when we have the IR code um, from decoding the um, button that was pushed on the remote control um, if the IR code is larger than zero then we're going to be using chase mode and otherwise if it is 22 then we are going to be false chase mode is false and that puts it in that um, mode you know where it has the random colors and other other than that depending on which color one two three four five six seven um, we're going to uh, blue green cyan red magenta yellow or white and in this loop over here we simply do an analog read of the potentiometer then we change that to a level value which is um, going to be 0 to 255 so then we're going to do an IR receiver decode and as you can see um, it comes back with false if there is no data available but true if there is data available so this does the actual uh, decoding of the actual serial IR data that was sent to that um, receiver and <coughs> It just gets the command and sets the color accordingly, uh, which you saw that's you know th this thing over here. And if we are in chase mode, then chase the color 50 milliseconds delay, leave it on, otherwise, just randomize also with a 50 millisecond delay. And that's basically it. That's what it does. So it's actually running off the battery there. And as you as I saw before, let's put it in that random mode again. We can
This is maximum brightness. And this is minimum brightness, so it's not even showing. Wonder how low I can turn it down to. Looks a lot brighter on the camera, of course. To my eyes, this is um, like a hair trigger thing. It, you know, these are diodes, so they actually need a certain amount of voltage, and if they don't get enough voltage, they just don't turn on. Okay, so that's. That's full brightness, it's overloading camera, <laughs> but to my eyes that's actually not uh, uh, as bright, of course. Alright, so that is it. We got the light strip NeoPixel going, uh, and again we got the... We got the... Um, potentiometer doing analog reads and decoding mapping and we've got the IR receiver over here receiving the buttons on this um, IR remote so all sorts of stuff you can do with that as you can imagine oh and just in case you're wondering this little module over here uh, it's got one of these things on there, which is an I IR receiver and decoder. And it has two little components on there, as you can see. A little resistor and a capacitor. And <clears throat> you can actually buy those things. You don't have to use this module. You can po poke this thing into a breadboard with two little components and do the same thing on any microcontroller. And if you look at the, so if you look on AliExpress, for instance, you can buy ten of those things for eighty-three cents. And if you then scroll down to the information here, you will find that there is a little circuit over here, a uh, hundred microfarad capacitor, and a hundred ohm. Resistor by the looks of it and a 20k larger than 20k resistor there, but that would be the input impedance of the like a microcontroller. So, and as you can see, it comes back with the actual codes and things like that. So, that is what you can use instead of that little module, you can make your own module, in other words. Just thought that that might be interesting as well. And if you don't have a remote control, and any remote control will do, you can actually buy a remote control and a little receiver together for a dollar twenty-three. So as you can see, there is not necessarily any need to get any really expensive modules or anything. You can simply buy the components and make your own. Alright, so that's the end of this little episode, and next we're going to be um, doing something else, so I'll see you guys later, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you actually hit the little bell, then you'll be notified when a new episode comes. I'll see you guys later.